My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. I'm sure we have all, or almost all of us have had the experience of holding a newborn baby, of holding a little infant. And we know from experience that the baby's skin is extremely soft and smooth and very sensitive. It's soft to the touch. There's a phrase that is as smooth as baby's skin. It's delicate, it's new, and it needs to be protected, right? The, the body of the baby is very fragile. The head of the baby needs to be especially protected until the skull is fully formed. They have the soft spot on the head. And in general, the skin is, is beautifully soft. Well, St. Josemaria, the founder of Opus Dei, he liked to compare that image of baby's skin to the skin of a campesino, a farmer out in the field who has worked the plow for many years and therefore his skin is callous and thick, covered in blisters and has become, with time, insensitive. In some cases, their hands have been burned and literally the nerve endings are gone so they can touch hot machinery or hot pans without even flinching. Their skin is unfeeling, it's dull, it's unyielding, it's impenetrable, it's thick. If a mosquito were to land on the skin of that newborn baby, that child, the baby would probably flinch immediately from the touch. But if the same mosquito lands on the skin of a campesino and maybe even bites him, he may not even realize there's no reaction. His skin is hardened. Jesus, this is a helpful image for us to consider when thinking about the heart, about our heart. And St. Josemaria would go on to say that the sensitive skin of the baby is the heart that feels the slightest motions of the Holy Spirit, as well as the subtle attacks of the devil. But the hard, callous skin of the campesino, it's neither open to the Holy Spirit, nor sufficiently on guard against the temptations of the evil one. Well, how goes my heart, Jesus? In this time of prayer, we can consider the state of our heart. Is it hard or is it soft? Is it callous or is it refined? Is it insensitive or is it sensitive? Is it unreceptive or is it receptive? Today's gospel is very moving because it involves the healing of the man with a withered hand. But it's also troubling because we see you, Jesus, in a moment when you are angry. And that's not very usual for us to consider. When we think of you, Jesus, we don't usually think of you as angry. But it's an important element of your humanity, the passion of anger, of righteous anger, which you display from time to time. We can think of that moment where you cleanse the temple and you do so angrily. Here in this gospel scene, we see you and you are reacting with anger against the hardness of heart of the Pharisees. We read, Jesus entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. And they watched him to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. 
Jesus, these Pharisees don't care about the man with the deformity, with the withered hand. If they really cared, they would have sought any way to cure him. That would have been their priority. But instead, their hearts are hardened to his suffering. And they only care about entrapping you to be able to accuse you and ultimately to kill you, to crucify you. These Pharisees are hardened against the, the, the man with the withered hand. They're hardened against you, Jesus. And so you react with anger, an anger born of love, not of hatred. What caused this anger? It was their hardness of heart. This is from a commentary. To use other words, it was the callousness of their conscience, their want of feeling. The hearts of the Pharisees had, as it were, grown coarse and had lost their proper softness. Here's an example. The hand may furnish us with an illustration. Some persons have very delicate hands. The blind who read Braille with their fingers develop special sensitiv sensitivity, and this sensitivity is of great value. But when men and women are put to work machinery or break stones or do other rough work, their hands become hard and callous. Even so, it is with the heart, which ought to be exceedingly tender. But through remaining in sin, it becomes callous and unfeeling. Use is second nature. The traveler's foot gets hardened on the way. His face becomes hardened by the cold. His whole constitution is hardened by his way of life. But hardening is of the worst kind when it takes place in the heart. The heart ought to be all tenderness. And when it is not, the life must be coarse and evil. Yet multitudes are morally smitten with ossification of the heart. Do we not know some men in whom the heart is simply a huge muscle? If they have any hearts, they are made of leather, for they have no pity for anybody, no fellow feeling even for their relatives. God save us from a hard heart. It leads to something worse than death. This is the tragedy of this scene, Jesus, of this gospel scene. Because we see how this man with a withered hand is brought before the crowd. And you, Jesus, ask them all a question. You say, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But the Pharisees were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched out his hand, and it was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. What a tragedy. Jesus, we see this anger of yours before their obstinance. Why are you angry? Because their hardened hearts are not giving you an opportunity to engage with them, to reach them. They've close themselves off. And so, Jesus, your anger is mingled with grief. They go together as a single emotional reaction for you. You look around with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart. Because you're mourning these Pharisees, whom you love, and you long for their love in return. You long for their conversion. You want them to turn back to you. Later, we'll see your sentiment, which is very similar when you say that you are like a hen who longs to gather her brood under her wings, but then you say, you would not let me, right? The, the, Jerusalem, the Pharisees, they would not let you gather them in under your wings. And this is why you react with anger and with grief. Jesus, we don't want you to act that way towards us. We don't want you to have this reaction towards us. And so we can... We can ask ourselves, as this time of prayer concludes, where is this hardness of heart present in us? Where do we close doors that Jesus is trying to open for us? 
Where do we close ourselves off and become calloused or obstinate? Does this obstinacy manifest itself in our dealings with others, leading to a lack of love or refinement with them? Jesus, we ask you to soften our hearts. Help us to be receptive to the many invitations that you have given us to convert. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.